welcome everybody. So just a few things. Like I said, we are being recorded. Um, so and thank you all for coming. You know, technically we're sold out, but as you can tell, a lot of people kind of partied hard. I looked through Twitter this morning and saw a lot of people were at the Steak and Shake, and that's probably why they're not here today. Um, so we'll be covering lots of info. Uh, I will have time for questions at the very end. You know, we do have to be up and out of here by 9.55. But we're welcome to talk in the hallway if there's a few questions. So as you're going on, if you have questions, write them down, put them in your phone, make a mental note. We will cover them at the end. Can everybody hear me okay? Cool beans. So who am I? I am Haley Twyman Breck. I have a master's in counseling psychology. Um, I am an LPC candidate mental health therapist in Edmond, Oklahoma, America. I am currently pursuing my specialization in early childhood trauma. Uh, I am also the Director of Marketing and Training at Seasons of Change Behavioral Health Services in Oklahoma. So I lecture a lot about social media, trauma, working with secular clients, and emotion. And I'm also a former researcher at the University, or Oklahoma State University. I went to two different schools, so I got to keep my university straight. So who is he? This is my lovely assistant, my husband. This is Delton Brack. He has a Bachelor's in Humanities, and he focuses a lot on the study, secular study of religion. Um, we are also the co-hosts of Malt House Games, so we'll kind of get into that in a little bit. But, so if you're familiar with Tuesday Night Games, Delton is one of the guest editors of Tuesday Night Games as well. Plus, he's adorable. <laughs> <laughs> so a little about us, what kind of gamers we are. My favorite game is Twilight Struggle. I have also never lost a game of Twilight Struggle or Splendor. I have never won Rising Sun. Delton, his favorite game is Dominant Species. He has never lost in Star Realms. He's also never won in Twilight Struggle or Splendor. I wonder why. <laughs> so like I said, we are the co-hosts of the Malt House Games podcast. It's a tabletop games podcast, but we also talk about beer, psychology, cats, all sorts of other things. So you can find us on SoundCloud, iTunes, Twitter, YouTube, Facebook, all that jazz. We also have business cards up here with all of our contact information. So at the end of the show, if you'd like to come up, ask a few questions, grab a business card, give a firm handshake with direct eye contact, I can provide all of those things. <laughs> Alrighty. So before we get started, I have to do a mandatory lame disclosure here. So this presentation is for educational purposes only and for fun. It's not medical or mental health advice. I have a caseload of about 25 people. That's all I can handle. I can't be your therapist today, but I can ask or answer questions for you if you have them as they come up. Um, so if you or a loved one ever experience a mental health or other emergency, please call 911 or go to your nearest ER. If you're feeling low or one of your friends are feeling low, you know, make sure you get them help. But if it's not an emergency and you do want mental health care, you can't go to psychology today. You'll find me if you're in Oklahoma. But if you just type in your zip code in psychology today, they'll find therapists all in your area, which is pretty cool. All righty. Let's kind of go over what we're talking about today. So first, I'm going to go over some definitions so we're all on the same page of what we're talking about. Then we're going to go over the theory of rage quitting. So for all you psych nerds out there, I'll be applying the frustration aggression hypothesis for everyone else. We're going to talk about why we get angry all the time. Um, we're also going to talk about what goes on in the brain. What, what happens in our prefrontal cortex, our thinking part? What happens to our emotions whenever we rage quit, whenever we get frustrated in gaming? We're also going to talk about how to make it stop, not only in ourselves, but in others. How to take a chill pill. And then last, we'll have time for questions. Ready to go? All right. How am I talk? How's my speed? All right. I do talk with my hands a lot, so don't be alarmed if I knock this microphone off. It might happen. So before we get started, I want to talk a little bit about research. So research is something that suggests the relationship of common characteristics. However, research and data does not 100% explain behavior. For example, testosterone may lead to aggression. Males have higher testosterone than females. So males are more likely to become aggressive than females. But at the same time, if I didn't have my coffee this morning, I'd probably be very aggressive myself. Ready? So anecdotal evidence is evidence that relies on personal testimonies, like my story. So something may be true in your case, so not everything we talk about today is going to apply to you. This is just general research. It doesn't mean that you're lying or that what you're going through is not true. This just means this is what the research typically suggests. So let's go over some definitions. So rage quitting for the purpose of this presentation is becoming angry while playing a game and quitting. This can happen in board games, video games, nerd games, and other non-nerd related activities. Delton has rage quit making butter. I, taught, I gave him cream in a mason jar, and he was shaking, the shaking it trying to make butter, and it exploded on him, and I've seen him throw it across the kitchen. 
So you can rage quit in non-board gaming related activities. Frustration is a response that occurs when a goal is interrupted. So whenever we're playing board games and we don't get that certain card and ticket to ride, that's frustration. Anger is a strong feeling of annoyance, hostility, or displeasure. And anger is different from aggression in that aggression is a behavior. So anger is the feeling, aggression is a behavior. Now behavior can be an action, it can be calling somebody names, calling somebody a jerk face, it can be all of the above, and flipping a table. So now we kind of are on the same page with our definitions. Let's talk about the theories of rage quitting. So first of all, why do we even like board gaming? What's the point of board games? Well, the research suggests humans love social interaction. Our brains feed off of each other. We have these little cells in our brain called mirror neurons. And whenever you are in the presence of another human being, we are, our neurons are activated. So if I were to look over and see you smiling, then yeah, my automatic reaction is a smile generally. We want to match. So we feed off of other human beings. Whenever I see you smiling, my brain tells me, oh, Haley, you're supposed to be happy. We love to be around people. And we, humans, we also love goals. Goals increase self-esteem and positive emotion. Just having a goal, whether that is in board games or in real life, can increase our self-esteem and increase how happy we feel about ourselves, whether or not we're necessarily meeting that goal at that time. So even though it's fun, it's also fun to you know, hand your husband's butt to him in Twilight, struggle, but you know, that's just me. But we love board games. Morning. So, but even though we love board games, they are still frustrating. So as we said earlier, frustration is the blockage of a goal attainment, and there's always a, a goal in board gaming. So whether it's building a road, destroying communism, or breeding sheep, whatever, or just to hand your spouse's butt to them, there's always a goal. But whenever this frustration is too high, we're always going to experience frustration in board gaming. That's part of the fun, though. But when this frustration is too high, that can lead to quitting. So why is that? Well, frustration, what the research suggests, leads to thwarted autonomy, competence, and self-efficacy. Basically, whenever we get too frustrated, it makes us feel like we don't have control over our own lives anymore. And so whenever we feel like we don't have control, this makes us, uh, our self-esteem decrease. If you feel like you can't control anything that's going on in your life, you feel like you can't handle what's going on, even if it's in a board game, that threatens our sense of self-worth. So for example, even if you're just looking for that stupid pink card and ticket to ride, you have no control over that. And that still threatens our self-esteem, even though we logically know that it's not our fault. So this threat to self-esteem can lead to anger, can lead to aggression, blaming others, and just flat out thinking that others are jerks. So why does this affect us? So low self-esteem increases the perception that you believe that others are out to get you. And feeling that others are out to get you actually decreases self-esteem. So I want to give an example of a game I played with Delton the other day. I've been talking about Ticket to Ride a lot because I'm really salty about a game we played about three days ago. We're sitting in a laundromat in Louisville, Kentucky on our way to Gen Con, doing our clothes, and we're playing Ticket to Ride, the pocket edition, and he takes my track. How much, are you all familiar with Ticket to Ride? Is anybody not familiar with Ticket to Ride? All right, so Ticket to Ride, basically you're building train sets across, Delton, you can probably explain this better. I'm going to botch this, I'm just saying. You're building train tracks across the United States. Um, if he takes my train track, I can't take it, so I have to go like a long way route around. Well, Delton took my train track. So being that I was already losing, my self-esteem's already kind of low because I'm not really not feeling too great. So my automatic thought is Delton took that train track to be a jerk, not to build his own track. You know, he could have been building that train track to help his own track across the United States. But my automatic thought was he was out to get me. So Delton, were you out to get me? Okay, so I was right. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> I accept that, I'll get him back. Morning. So, like I said, this perception that others are out to get you is more prevalent in ambiguous situations. So if I'm not sure whether or not Delton is out to get me or if he's just building his own train track, it's more, I'm more likely to think that others are out to get me. It's a protective factor for humans. Um, if we think, if somebody cut us off in traffic, what's our automatic feeling? What, what do you feel whenever someone cuts you off? Frustration, anger, right? Well, what if that guy's just trying to get to the hospital because his kid's being born? We don't automatically go to the positive emotions. We automatically go to the negative emotions in ambiguous situations. It's the same in board gaming. So if we think that others are being hostile, we are more likely to become angry and aggressive ourselves. And anger is associated with other blame. 
especially if there's low self-esteem. So you're kind of seeing the, the connection here. The lower the self-esteem, so if we have, we're feeling low self-esteem because we're losing, the more likely it is we're going to get angry, and the more likely it is we're going to blame others. We're just like digging ourselves into a hole. So if we get angry and aggressive with others, they'll likely get angry and aggressive with us, which leads to another cycle of misery. Because if they really are mad at us or flipping over the table or leaving halfway through a losing game, um, that negatively affects our self-esteem because somebody really is mad at us. So we get angry, we act out aggressively, others get mad at us, we think others are mad at us because they are, that makes us feel worse about ourselves and make us feel even more like we want to rage quit. Y'all follow me? Cool. I know it's early and I'm talking with my hands a lot because I've had a lot of coffee, so. So when we get aggressive, we can rage quit or others may quit us because frankly, who wants to play with somebody who gets frustrated and leaves halfway through a game or flips the table or like our friend Allison did, we were playing Sagrada and Delton stole her, stole her dice. That was her perception. And she goes, no, hits the table. And all of a sudden, all of our Sagrada pieces just go all over the place. Right. Let's talk for a second about who gets aggress aggressive. So aggression is more likely to occur if you come first to the game with a bad attitude. So if you... I've already had a bad day, I've had a stressful day at work, you come home to your sweetie or to your roommates and you pl start playing a board game, you're more likely to rage quit if you've had a bad day already, if you've been angry already that day or frustrated already that day. It's also more likely to happen to males, like we talked about earlier. The higher the testosterone a human being has, the more likely it is they are to become angry and thus aggressive. Now, it doesn't mean that all males are aggressive and all females aren't. Like I said, I got kind of angry the other day playing Ticket to Ride. <laughs> But it just means that the higher levels of testosterone you have, the more likely it is that you will get angry and aggressive and rage quit. Um, you're also more likely to become aggressive with a same-sex friend. Now, there are multiple reasons for that. So females are more likely to become angry and rage quit with females. Men are more likely to become angry and rage quit with males. So that might come into play if you're playing with a mixed group of friends of different genders um, versus if you're just playing with a same-sex roommate or whatnot or a same-sex partner. But all in all, everybody becomes aggressive. Everybody experiences aggression. So let's figure out why, what happens in the brain. So before we talk about the, what happens in the brain, I want to give you some definitions of what we're talking about. So first of all, we have the prefrontal cortex. So if you look at my big old noggin here, right here is our frontal lobe. Technically, this is the prefrontal cortex. We're going to call it the PFC. It's responsible for personality expression, decision making, moderating social behavior, making goals, and rational thoughts. It is also not fully developed until the age of 25, which probably explains a lot of our college experiences. Yeah? I'm getting some nods there. Okay. So, also, if you've ever seen anybody or read anything in a textbook about a lobotomy, whenever there's the destruction of the prefrontal cortex there, and people lose their personality, they're flat. That's why, because the prefrontal cortex is destroyed in a lobotomy. So, now that we kind of know what the prefrontal cortex is, decision-making, personality, if you destroyed this, I wouldn't be as annoying as I am right now. Let's talk about the amygdala. So amygdala is in the middle of our brain. It is a little walnut-shaped part of our brain, right in the very middle. It plays a part in the limbic system, which means it plays a role in processing emotions. So, it is activated whenever we have aggressive behaviors or experience anger or anxiety, or depression, all of those fun emotions. So, these little guys are inversely related. If your prefrontal cortex is activated, if your decision-making part of your brain is activated, your emotion part is not activated. At the same time, if you're really highly emotional right now, you can't think. You can't make decisions. So, if you're getting really frustrated in the game, and you just flip over that table, or you bang on the table, when you're thinking clearly, like, I would never do that. But in that moment, your thinking part of your brain is shut down. So your emotions get really high, your brain shuts down, your brain's like, I'm angry, aggression, knock over that table, or leave the game. However, um, if this part of your brain is activated, you don't have that aggressive tendency. So if we're winning, we're like in the game, our strategy's going well, we are kicking ass and ticket to ride, or any other game then you're not going to have that anger. You're not going to have that aggression. You might even have happiness. You're just in the workflow zone. So think about this, how this relates to test anxiety. How many of you all have ever taken a test before? Everybody. Right on. So have you ever stayed up all night or studied for weeks at a time, felt uber prepared for a test, only to sit down in the moment and forget everything? 
Yeah? So the reason why that is, is whenever we sit down for a big, important, scary test, our emotion part of our brain is activated. Our anxiety is high. Our thinking part literally shuts down. Does that make sense? Is that kind of what happens in board gaming as well? So now that we know what goes on in the brain, now that we know kind of the theory behind why we rage quit, let's talk about how we make it stop. So the first thing we can do is identify and avoid triggers. So identify what precedes you or your friend rage quitting and try to avoid it. You know, have I never been able to get through blood rage without raging in blood? Yeah. It's happened to Delton. This is case study number one for rage quitting. My inspiration, my muse for this presentation. <laughs> Does it always happen after a fifth hour of continuous play? Well, so in our brain, we have glucose is what feeds us. We need carbohydrates to fuel our brain. Our brain eats about a third of our carbohydrates, which is why if you don't eat a lot of carbs, you kind of start feeling sluggish, right? If you eat a snack, you get that sugar rush, which is why we always say, or whenever I was a tutor in college, I always say eat snacks while you study because it feeds your brain that glucose. Well, as we're going on, as we're using our brain, there are specialized regions of the brain. You know, we talked about the amygdala, we talked about the prefrontal cortex. As we're using those parts of our brain, they start to eat up the glucose, okay? So if you've been through five hours of gameplay and you haven't eaten a snack, all that glucose in your prefrontal cortex is gone. It's shot, it's out of gas. So it doesn't have the ability to regulate your emotions as much. Does that make sense? Because your prefrontal cortex also plays a role in managing your emotions. Now, if you've ever watched a sad movie, or here's an example, have you ever had the desire to laugh at a funeral? Or laugh in a situation you're not supposed to? You know, your amygdala is saying, let's laugh, let's laugh, let's laugh. But your prefrontal cortex is the one that's kind of regulating that. It's like, nah, man, don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> it's the one that's trying to shut us down. Well, if you've used all that glucose in the day, and it's the end of the day, that's why you're more likely to get snappy, snippy at the end of the day, because all of this resource is gone. That's why you're more likely to get snippy and rage quit at the end of a long board gaming day, because it's out of gas. It can't regulate your emotions anymore. So does it always, does it happen when I'm hungry? Eat that glucose. Does it happen when everybody starts making fun of me for the time I lost my eight-year-old nephew in Catan? Now, what are our triggers? So we can avoid them. We can also use our cats. <laughs> <laughs> So let's go into that. So these are our cat skills. So these are things that I teach in my practice and things that I've taught in psychoeducation groups before. These are grounding techniques to help us to calm our tits a little bit. So the first thing we could do is see competing emotion. Do something that creates a competing emotion for five minutes. So let's say you're sitting at a, what, what are some clues that your body gives you that you're getting this close to rage quitting or throwing that stupid video game remote control across the living room. What are, what are some clues your body gives you that you're frustrated? Muscle tension. What else? Yes. Getting hot. Angry thoughts. Slews of bad words. Or is that just me? So once you start to realize what your body is doing, you can start to do some of these things to make it stop. The first thing, competing emotion. So our thoughts, our feelings, and our behaviors are all intertwined. Our thoughts lead to feelings, which lead to behaviors. Our behaviors lead to thoughts, lead to feelings. We can never change our feelings. If you were to tell me that you're feeling sad right now, I'm like, no, you're just tired. You're going to get angry at me because I'm just totally devaluing what you just said. We can never change our feelings, but we can change our behaviors and we can change our thoughts that lead to our feelings. So if we can't change our emotions, we have to do something that creates a competing emotion. If we're feeling angry, then let's do something that makes us happy. No. Think about that uh, one time that you had an excellent time at this game. Or you know, go off for five minutes and listen to your favorite song. Or go pet your cat for five minutes. You can do this while your friend with analysis paralysis is taking their turn. Perfect timing. You only need a few minutes to shut down that emotion. You can also walk away. Walk away for five minutes because I'd much rather have a friend walk away from the board game than to flip over my table in Sagrada. I'm sorry, Allison. She's going to be watching this afterward. You can also do something to engage your thoughts. So count the stitches on your jeans while your friend with AP is taking their turn. Do this for 30 seconds to a minute. Count the freckles on the back of your hand. Count how many board games your friend has on the shelf. That might take you longer than what you need. But you know, that's a good friend to have if so. 
You can also do a sensation. Engage in a sensation, a sensation can stop an emotion. For example, taking a bite of a lime. That will get you out of your head. So that's what, what's happening whenever we're having a lot of emotions. Emotions trigger thoughts, right? So if we're really, really high in emotion, our mind starts to run away with us. We're feeling anxious, you start thinking about everything that could go wrong. If we start feeling depressed, we start, start thinking about everything we've ever done wrong. If we start getting angry, we start thinking about how everybody's out to get us, right? So we need to do something that kind of gets us out of our head. So for example, grabbing ice produces a sensation that releases endorphins, and that gets us connected with our body, and that just starts shutting down those negative thoughts, which thus brings down our emotions, right? So grabbing ice, biting a lime does the same thing. Imagine biting a lime right now. Kind of get that sour feeling in your jaw. We start to connect with our body, and thus it starts to deactivate that amygdala, that emotion part of our brain, which kind of brings us down the ground level so we can start making better choices, okay? Um, last we can do is say it out loud. If you are feeling a certain emotion, you know that that amygdala is activated, so we want to activate the prefrontal cortex, that thinking part. So saying the emotion out loud actually activates the prefrontal cortex. So if you're feeling angry, just say, guys, I'm feeling angry right now. Automatically, that decreases our anger because why? Thinking part's activated. We had to think in order to say that. Alrighty? So, if we're feeling angry, feeling frustrated, feeling like we're about to rage quit, do a competing emotion. Walk away. Do something to engage your thoughts. Try a sensation, bite that lime, or say it out loud. Those are all great ways to deactivate that amygdala and get us back to thinking level so we can start handing our husband's butt to him in the next game. Because anger, like most emotions, only lasts a few minutes. It seems like it lasts longer because we are constantly re-triggering ourselves. If we just let ourselves sit and stew with an emotion and not try and push it away, it'll last about five to 10 minutes. I do a great activity with a lot of my clients and friends, uh, those who might feel like they're, they're feeling anxious for days at a time. You set a 10 minute timer and you just let them sit with that emotion. Most of the time that emotion goes away before that 10 minutes is up because you're no longer re-triggering it. If you're thinking, I shouldn't be anxious, shouldn't be anxious, shouldn't be anxious, your brain's going anxious, 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 anxious. And so sitting with that and just letting your body feel it actually makes the emotion go way quicker. So that being said, thoughts are excellent triggers. You know, I've already expressed to you this morning how I'm still thinking about my husband taking my track and ticket to ride. I still, thinking about that, I still kind of feel that frustration. And so engaging in any of our cat skills kind of gets our thoughts away from that and deactivates that emotion a bit. So doing a coping skill like distracting yourself or avoiding the trigger altogether may help you to, or your friend, to decrease their frustration quicker. Here's a little summary here. So, in conclusion, frustration leads to anger, which can lead to aggressive behaviors like rage quitting. Someone is more likely to become angry when frustrated if they have low self-esteem. When someone gets angry, it literally inhibits your ability to think clearly because those two parts of your brain are inversely related. But there are many ways to avoid the rage quit drive. So before we go into questions, I left plenty of time for questions today. Um, if, you'd like, if you liked our presentation today, uh, be sure to follow us on Twitter, Instagram, YouTube. Find us on iTunes, Google Play, or the Malt House Games podcast. We don't just talk about psychology. We talk about board games. He's your board game guy. I'm just the co-host. He's the main host. We talk about board games, psychology, beer, tornadoes, whatever comes to mind that episode. You can also follow us on Facebook. Uh, my personal Twitter handle is at Squirrelly Geek, and Delton's is at Delton Brack. Um, if you'd like some consultation opportunities, so whether that is for if you're creating a board game related to psychology, or if you have questions related to doing trainings yourself, feel free to email us at contact at Yeah, you. feel free to reach out to us on Twitter. Thank you.